Hello and welcome. Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle. Uh, I'm Josh. I'm Sean. And if you don't know that by now, well, thanks for being a patron. Don't know how you got here. And uh, if you came here by accident, <laughs> wow, you get bonus mm -hmm. points. So. If you came here by accident, I will make you brownies. Right. Like actual good brownies. Just you have to come to the house because COVID, because... You know, I assume by the time you hear this, we're just a wasteland and there is no more uh, state mandates. We're just one one anti-union establishment and living off and, and, bits. And new world order and there are no more communes. <laughs> right. and there's no more borders. And, and Anyway, Not yet. here's to hope and good and, and all of this shit that you fucking hope will happen soon enough, but won't happen soon enough. Sure. <laughs> mm. So, seriously though, in case you don't know what this is about, uh, this is Everything. this is our unfiltered, like just us being un un live, un unchill filtered, un yes, un unchill filtered, uh, us being completely just raw and, and and you know open and, and ourselves, and this is our safe space basically to talk about whatever we want uh, while we try to figure life out one drink at a time. That's the tagline. Um, the bottle in today's little journey is Uncle Nearest 1856. Premium whiskey, or so it says. Yes. Uh, I find some good things about it. I find some, some things I want to say better about it and expand into the good points. But also, you know, the bad points, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like being young and being brittle and being sharp and being in your, your teen years. You know, Basically, it yeah. starts out as a as a uh, what mm. is eight to thirteen year old, I believe. Yep. Now the wow. Oh, you're fine. I'm just glad it's still in one piece. Oh please! Um, you see how thick? Yeah. I, I was talking at, about the table. Look at oh, <laughs> the IKEA table. Yep. Yeah, I was worried about the six layer deep MDF board. But what, <laughs> just, so what, like, what had happened was that's what pro wrestlers do. Sean through. let the bottle fall over, but um, yeah, well, it is a stout bottle. Uh, but no, what I was what I was going to say was, if we're talking about young and brittle, the uh, Uncle Nearest eighteen eighty four is nine is is nine dollars cheaper a total wine, and it's uh, a younger age statement. It's supposed to be a little hotter burn uh, for those of you that like whiskey. Um, this won't be a total whiskey review. Uh, we did that for this in a separate video on the YouTube channel on Rim Six. Uh, there's a link down in the show notes, and uh, please check it out. Um, we just want to say thank you, by the way. For you know, supporting the channel and for for accessing this bonus content and giving us a reason to talk. Hopefully, more than one reason. Yeah. You know, I was trying to make a correlation teen years, and I had completely forgotten that when you do the math, eighteen fifty six to two thousand twenty one is the near bare minimum of the teen years. Yep, it's twelve point. Seven. seven years. So it's almost 13 years. It's just about there, which unfortunately is also <laughs> roughly the age of consent in the U.S. is almost 13. Uh, oh, man. Oh, yeah. God, this so th this, place. this podcast will go all over the place as, as episodes go. We're, we're just going to oh, learn yeah. things such as, uh, speaking of teen years, Sean, oh, man. what were your teen years like? My teen years sucked. My teen years were a lot of exposition to my parents that didn't know, didn't need to know that part of my life or my lifestyle. And unfortunately, they learned about it all at once. Just like I learned. If I'm speaking from a Dr. Drew Adam Carolla love line, 1990. Wow. Throw it back. 2000 era. Mm -hmm. Get a fucking lock on your door. Get a lock on your door. Is this Please. for you or for them? Just, yes. <laughs> for everyone. Uh, put a fucking lock on your door. If you're a parent and you have a kid, put a fucking lock on your door. If you're a kid who has a parent, put your fucking lock on your door. If you are a parent of just an animal who's inquisitive uh -huh. and you're not used to the cold nose, put a lock on your door. I don't know how much more clear I can be. Apologies to headphone users. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to perform. I'm yeah, sorry. I know. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm people. One of the other things we're going to be doing uh, I thought during I this. I to 13. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there while we, we the So while we uh, talk, figure also out why. Also at 13, I learned how to tie my own tie. All right. While we're. Half wins or not. 
While we're figuring out life. You wanted me to tie into all the shit on the Tie, hey, nice. Tie, hey. hey. But while we're also, while we're doing this oh, ridiculous enough, we're also going to be playing Domino, so oh, apologies for, Christ, you're going to hear a lot of this, probably. Uh, remember, seven. You get seven. And we Nine. both just relearned how to play dominoes, thanks to a YouTube video, <laughs> not wow. five minutes ago. Oh, man. So this is the Boneyard. We both had good things to say about it, but what I was really upset about and what I was really missing, uh -huh. genuinely, was the oatmeal raisin cookie note. I was so adamantly for... I wanted that maple to I was come through. so for the... Oatmeal, you gave me an oatmeal raisin cookie fucking whiskey, and then you under delivered on the oatmeal raisin cookie. I want a cask strength version where I get that oatmeal raisin cookie because I, hey, I, I see, I see peaks. I see, I just like, I, I, see I just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking through the keyhole, and I see the the fields of oat and dustiness and hmm. corn, but not, not quite. The oatmeal, the creaminess of that, the raisins, the saturation of sugar, and the dried stone fruit, and the cookie. I mean, the cookie. You have to have the caramelized brown sugar, cooked notes. That's that's all the best parts of a cookie. And and, and I didn't get any of that. And I was a little <laughs> upset that everyone went, "Oh, it tastes like an oatmeal raisin cookie." You are liars. You're well charlatans. You are broken. Or at you're, least, well, maybe we're broken. The holes in your faces need to be reconstructed because yeah. the tongues at which taste and participate in the salivation and the participation of the, the notes and the partaking of the, the notes yellow pudding pups. need to be fixed. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that I was disappointed in um, was that one of, the, one of their big selling points on the label is maple charcoal filter. And I was like, there's not maple in this. And, and it is there... But I guess when I see something advertised with a flavor, such as vanilla or apple. Room for ice double first, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Around double. No, no. Oh. We, we, I was going to say we were Rochambeau, and oh, then okay. to see who goes first, and then after that. So don't worry. I won't kick you square in the nuts. No, I just don't have a right hand. Two, three. Wait. One, two, three, throw. Okay. One, One two, three, throw. Scissors. <laughs> One, two, three, throw. I win. Paper over rock. Yay. So, I don't have a double, which means, do you have a double? I do. You get to go. Let's get this. So, uh, getting back to the uncle nearest real quick, I'll just knock this out and then we'll get back to the teen years. Uh, we've had bad experience whenever some something is advertised as a flavor, like vanilla or apple or, or flavor pecan yeah. pie. Or, yeah. And uh, just recently, in fact, uh, time of recording today, uh, February th 13th, the uh, our Valentine's Day episode drop where we did four different Jim Beams, two, the Jim Beam white, the Jim Beam black, and then Jim Beam vanilla. And I surprised him by pulling out Jim Beam apple, along with the uh, apple pie flavored Kit Kat. <laughs> threatened me with a terrible <laughs> and time. And the vanilla and the apple hurt me personally. The vanilla and the apples were not whiskeys; they were vanilla or apple liqueur infused with Jim Beam. It's a different category. It's a, oh god! And the second you open it, you're like. You can smell that. You can see the color green. Like, you can just... It, it was bad. You, you all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sean's hand is hurting him yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tendonitis, carpal tunnel. Yeah, it's... it's uh, uh, inflammation's a bitch and a half. Yeah, it's uh, not so much occupational therapy or... His, uh, no, it's, it is it is it, occupational hazard. Hazard, that's the word I'm looking it's, for. It's, um, it's repetitive motion injury. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Which is um, why. Go, at, please, 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 please get a fucking teacher. As as my drum learn, teacher, that's why learn, he's on me all the time to relax my grip and yeah. not clench the sticks. This is all stupid shit I'm paying for from being young, dumb, and naive. Oh, wait, I don't want that. I don't want. Uh, I want one, two, three, this is why I'm trying to spread a good message. There you go. Oh, fuck. Your turn, Holmes, whenever you feel like it. In the meantime, I'm going to talk about my teen years, which were a lot more boring than most people's. I was very slow on the... Uh, I was the last of five kids, so my parents had it wired by the time I came along. They they knew all the tricks. Both my brothers had, you know, would always, like, escape out the bedroom window when they were growing up. I came along nine years after the next oldest sibling, so I kind of got, got all the hand-me-downs, but I also got 
all the lessons already. Yay. So... Because we taught one kid you have to learn from their mistakes, not that you're your own person and you're going to make your own mistakes. No, it's more like we know what you can, we know what you, what you mean when you try to lie to us. Right. We know what you're, you know, and I try, I tell my same, my kid, my kid's 13 now. I tell her the same thing. Look, kid. Anything you've tried to you're say. You're not slick. I we know. <laughs> we, m- mom and I both know. Um, her mother is the older of two siblings. So it's different. It was different for her growing up. She had to, you know, she always got blamed for stuff. Whereas I had no, by the time I was nine years old, there was nobody at home. Both my sisters got married at 16. My parent, my, my, my dad argued with my mom that, Hey, they're just going to elope if we don't, you know, if we don't say yes. So let's at least give them a, a wedding. And then they both got, both my sisters ended up getting divorced at least twice. So. Okay, you went deeper into the teen years thing. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll follow you. I'll follow suit. Well, I'll but, follow suit. I'll but follow as far as like getting into trouble, the trouble didn't happen until I went to college. When I was away from home, uh, the trouble really didn't happen until I was, you know, like I didn't have to answer to my parents immediately. Mostly my mom, but uh, I go- found the most freedom. In that. We'll see. Wow. The, the first time I felt that was like it's my turn. Yeah, it should be. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah I placed above you. Yeah. Yeah. Or sorry, below. Yeah. Um, the first time I got that, I, I went to the University of Oregon and I pulled out a guitar that uh, the guy I had played in my first band with when I was 13, who was Osteon. Oh, I, I thought you were just that. butchering Austin's name. <laughs> no, no, Osteon was the name of the first band I was in. And mm. We did Queen's Reich and Iron Maiden oh, and, man. and Queen's Reich. Megadeth and. Uh, Anthrax and Striper and oh god, can I keep going? Can I keep going? Oh, keep diving deep. Slaughter. Rat. Keep going. Keep going. Rat. Come warrant. On. Oh yeah, warrant. Yeah, that was on the list. Um, yeah. Dream, Dream Theater. Or was that later? Pull me under by Dream Theater because it was their latest like nineties kind of. <laughs> I can still remember. I used to. Oh, yeah. uh, I used to have a five CD disc player when it was like the thing and a turntable and man, being able to put on five, five CDs and just hit play and just let it go. And you, you had hours of just sitting there. You know, Lou Attention Experiment, his, his band he did that's basically Dream Theater without the same. Nice. <laughs> they're, well, on, they're doing their third album after 25 years. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Hopefully they didn't practice them. <laughs> uh, apparently it's. Uh, Maze balls. What'd you do in quarantine? <laughs> I changed music. I got better. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Like, you were great before. Um, Does that work? It uh, looks like it. I don't know what we do when we run out. Do we just grab seven more? I thought when you run out, you just win. Oh, wait. We were supposed to be keeping track of our points as we went. Oh, fuck a duck. How about You're this? Right. How about oh, this? shit on a dick. Here, 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 here. here. Let's, t- let's make this easy for ourselves. 150. First to 150 <laughs> points. <laughs> Here, oh, here, I don't know. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Hey, hey. How about we just we'll go through all the tiles, and when we're done, whoever goes out first. All right. There's no pressure here. Well, this yeah, is, I figured that's the, that's. The, this is a safe place. So anyway, um, what I I would sit there in front of my five CD disc player. Sorry, I'm really. It's okay. Right, let's go. In the dark. Dressed in black, Dockin. listening to Metallica and Queensryche and thinking I was just so, oh, just so dark and I'm Mysterious. so moody. Yeah, and little did I know, this was the 80s, what do you, or the 90s rather, what do you want? But, uh, my, actually, my, no, is it my turn? Did you, it, didn't you just do that? I don't know. Sorry, sorry, Josh. Go, go ahead. Seven. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm just seven. waiting for you to move. I think I think it's my turn just because there's seven and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You started, which means it's my turn. Okay. Math. Um. But Queen's right, man. For when I heard Queen's right, it was one of those moments of just wait. You can do this. This can be how you sing as a, as someone who was developing a singing style. Um, Jeff Tate just. Kind of opened my mind a little bit, and then you know I love Jeff Tate, but Rob, yeah. Rob Halford. But when I heard Rob Halford going to scream for vengeance, right? Man, that kicked me square in the sternum. Where <laughs> I went, I have that note. 
and I can sing Ooh. that all day long twice on Sunday. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Screaming! But, um... Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's so good to identify with, like, I don't know, I, I didn't get into the, uh, the, the, uh, what is it? Um, it is now your turn. Pantera's. Yeah, the Panteras. I mean, Panteras, Salmos, the the dark, like the thorough, like right. that kind of stuff. I was like, I was always into the super high head voice eighties metal. Like, right. dude, if you can hold that note, like uh, 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 three three inches of blood was a beautiful example of that. So, and I think that's because you're a musician and, and you always wanted to be a songwriter, right? I I always wanted to do it all. Well, see, just, I'm, it, a, I'm a performer first first and foremost. I like being on stage. Whether right. I'm on a kit backing up a songwriter and I'm making the song livelier with my understanding of dynamics and song structure and composition, much like Dave Matthews Band, although I don't like to equate that because <sighs> Dave Matthews Band, nobody likes it. No, no, nobody likes it. But I mean, composition wise, like there's a structure to everything I do. And sometimes, yeah, like I, I like the showing part of it and I like to flip my drumsticks and hit things real fucking hard. And it's like, it's a whole different side of me. Right. But I don't always need both of those things in the same show. For those of you that don't know, Sean and I, when quarantine wasn't a thing, we were uh, trying to get a jazz band going called the Dirty Martinis. Uh, link is in the bu- is in the uh, description down below. Yeah, the description. Uh, but uh, his I, my that's background with jazz is school. Yeah, he, he, that's what he loves to do. And it's and it's my foundation with mm-hmm. what I grew up with. And I, it is my passion. It is who I am. It is my yeah. foundation of music and understanding it. Like that Queen theater stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> this is the, where the operatic section oh, comes yeah, in. Oh, yeah, operatic stuff, great, yeah. Oh, uh, the operatic, operatic section. Operatic was fantastic. Uh, sure, sure. But, but also musical theater. Mm. Like, musical theater was great, too. My sister did uh, Little Shop of Horrors and Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera. And when I got to understand what musical theater was and how the performance aspect laid in so heavily to the music, it... it Put in a new appre- appreciation for me, and it put in a put in water. God damn! Okay, I get it in a second. Okay, um, it put in a new level of appreciation for me that allowed me a transparency to dive into all the details, all the things I wanted to explore with music and art and performance and drama and theater and all the stuff that I didn't get nourished and nurtured with. That was the allure of it. Oh, and I think allure. that's the allure of it for most kids who like anything to do with the arts. It's expressive. And you get to say something that you don't normally get to say. I think I'm an idiot. I think we, we were supposed to always have seven. It's like Scrabble. You, you always grab it. fucker. I don't know. You watched the same video I did. Yeah, it was two minutes and 40 seconds. We don't know how to play any of the well, games. Well, it occurs to me, like, when you are know, we... When, I'm sure the game doesn't When are we shit, going to grab... Just, like, when are we going to grab more is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, when are we going to grab more? It makes no sense. It, 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 do you have a, a, a wrist wrap? No, it's, it's in between the fingers. Oh, it's not my carpal tunnel? It's No, it's here. That's what you get for punching brick walls. You know, that's right here. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking, but I, yeah, I, I believe did, it. I did. I did punch a brick wall instead of mm. my dad, and I broke my uh, mm. my pinky finger going into my wrist on my right hand, and it didn't heal right because I cut myself out of my cast because I was in college and fucking stupid, and was like, "Oh yeah, I'll get past my jazz." You're twenty. You're twenty two. You're supposed to be a dick. I was twenty <laughs> or nineteen. I was younger yeah. than I was not old enough to well, drink, okay. and I was making such dumb decisions. Here's a question. Speaking of which, like the, I, when like, when did I you have your first alcohol stuff? for any of my dumb decisions ever? I made dumb decisions way before I got into alcohol. Right. Like, I, the, the dumb decision was there. Yeah. Alcohol just said, oh, hey. There was less <laughs> of a stoppage in play. 
There was no tap along well, the ice to stop okay, let the ice. I have two <laughs> questions for you. One, when... For you hockey I, Here's a question. How old were you when you had your first alcoholic beverage? I don't know. Young. Really young. Pre-15? Yeah. Pre-13? Yeah. Shit. Okay. First I was, alcoholic beverage? Yeah, not, uh, not counting like, like... Six, seven, eight, yeah. nine. Somewhere around there. Single digits. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I used to take sips of uh, mom's margaritas. Okay, no, I mean no an actual all drink of your own. Oh, buddy. Because if you want to talk about... <laughs> oh, oh, shut it. I, I told you about my kid you say, and You her. say don't. I'm like, no, the gulps I had were big boy gulps. Okay. So <laughs> like you're, chug, you're, chug, chug, hold on. three or four gulps down of mom's okay. margaritas that mm. were already an extra three or four shots of tequila too deep. I'm my putting kid, that other side of the story okay. out there. My kid the can my, my kid can one up you on that because you know how old she was when grandma decided that oh let's give her I some. I got the rumming and the gums mm-hmm. with the Jack Daniels, which is six why months I fucking hate Jack six Daniels. months at a restaurant. She's giving her little spoon strawfuls of margarita, and my kid's just like mm, 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 mm. and then one day she decided she was done, and to this day she hates yeah. any smell of alcohol. And I I hold out high hope that she'll. You know, maybe like, that's a lot of the determinant away from, from, from me for bourbon. Yeah. But there's a sour bitterness to it. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. I love pickles. I love most things sour. I love radishes. Well, you probably like a pickle back, don't you? I love pickle back. Ugh. But hold on. Okay. This is not a whiskey-related thing, but we're not on a whiskey-related podcast. We are just talking and right. having fun. It's your turn, by the way. I know it's my turn. Okay. I don't. Have then that's when you I'm pull from the boneyard. I'm stalling. Would that's when we pull me, from the boneyard. Would you let me stall? I have three things. Okay. Can I do... Uh, don't, don't, don't be mad. Don't it, be mad. If it me. matches a number, I don't care what you do. That's fine. Okay. I think. I think it has to be this. Okay. You, you can only do that or, if it's a double. If or, it's a double on a double. Or that. A double on a Right? Right. But if, you, if it's a double on a, a double, you can do that with a double, I believe. Either way, that's not... No, that's, that's good. That's good. You're good. Okay. You're good, G. And I'm going to do... Look, we're just checking and balancing. We're, we're running our own two-person uh, government. <laughs> we're making sure gonna, that nobody else is I'm going to do this. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Ha-ha! Uh, ha Same. So... Okay, so I my first alcoholic beverage, not counting, I grew up Catholic, so not counting all the little quote unquote lines that you get at, at Catholic Mass. But sorry, first to answer your question, yes. first real, first real alcohol when I knew. Mm-hmm. I should say, when was the first time you drank alcohol by yourself? Oh, that's different. Because that's different than social pressure or. Oh well, no, that's a different question. Yeah. Um, I. I mean, at a bar, you know, but but like. You you said I'm gonna drink, and whether it was you you managed to somehow get some alcohol and you went off behind the, the woodshed or whatever. Oh, okay. First time I had to sneak a drink. There you well sneak a drink or you legally had it. In oh, my case, okay. I was 22 when I started drinking. I waited. Wait, you're so like long. first time I had an illegal drink. I was old enough to buy it. No, I didn't have it. Oh. I, I when I drank, I had a license and everything. I when I said. Hey, I think I'll give this alcohol thing a try. I was 22. So right there, you know, this guy's a square. This guy, I took, I, I bloomed so, or blossomed so late when it came to so many things. Do I win if I place my last piece? I, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say yes. Wait a minute. No, it's, wh- how did you have an extra? Because I went. Does that work? Does yes, it works. That works. But it should be my turn because I still have two. No, I just you just played. I should always have. If you played, I should have one more. That's what I'm saying. What did you play after I played that? You played this. Yeah, I didn't see that, so it's my turn. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I didn't see that. I didn't see that, so it's my fault. It, my turn. It don't matter, not honey child, because I'm going to do that, and you're going to win anyway. If you're playing a two, you have three options, so you win. Oh. Okay. Eh. All right. So, that, all right, that was quick. And apparently, you're, when you win, you're supposed to slam down I the bones. I don't want to do that. It's, it's your an table. It's an IKEA table. It's your table. It's literally. It's healthy. actually thick. 
you know, the table, table with top, five C's. Tabletop itself is thick. Yeah. The problem is, it's held. It's an easel table, so it's got these little spigot holes. Spigot holes. Where you need to plug in a dowel rod okay. to pull them up, and I don't have Oops. a dowel rod that fits perfectly. Sorry, my phone. Which ah, fucking that should be it. So apparently, I yeah. I lose with eleven. Yeah, I. I you win. Don't ha- okay. You have the lower score. I, really. Okay. We need more players to really factor in the whole counting up points. Okay. And also, you don't play one game of dominoes, but we can we can stop here. Okay. He's in pain, and he go out on a high note. What's that high note? <clears throat> no, nope. Flat. Nope. Flat. Yep. Yeah. It's been too long. Oh, it's been too long. I can go higher. No. <laughs> yeah. Let go in my head like a scream. Yeah. What you do to me? Yeah. You're listening yeah. to 80s hair metal. All <laughs> room 6 time. radio. Room 6 radio. All the time. I should do room All 6 radio. Here. What would I do with room 6 radio? Oh, yeah. Should I just start a radio station? Room 6 radio? Room 6 radio. Can and we, just can we spin? Can like Spotify playlists? <laughs> mm. Oh, uh, we'll just we'll just keep adding to the playlist. The, the problem like, with radio, spend, is, like here's four hours, here's the well, next four hours. The problem with the radio out. station is that you can't just but be we'll like make it, we'll make it collaborative, so everybody gets you get you all get one song. Oh, like like uh, radio, like Vegas rocks with the J. I don't know what that means. You, you don't. You get, you, oh, you don't like Crazy Jaber? I don't listen to. I look. I don't, away listen, I don't listen to radio. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, shout out to Crazy J. Um, speaking of which, shout out to Chick Korea. Oh, Chick passed away. Keyboard maestro. Chick Corea. Uh, fantastic songwriter. Wonderful human being. Just all around. Conductor of every facet of his life. Uh, a man to be admired. A musician to be... Exotic. Just, just, just exemplified. There you go. Appreciated. The man broke so many barriers. Him, uh, Maynard Ferguson, uh, um, Victor Wooten, Marcus Miller, Stanley Clark. Like, just great fucking electric positions. Chikria, Keith Jarrett, bridging the gap between the, the acoustic and electric piano world. See, you're throwing out names I don't recognize, and I'm going to have to research now. Oh, so, thank you. That's that's my bread and butter. Bread and butter. I'm, 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 I'm significantly upset that the chicory is gone. You know, I I feel like... For, I'm, I'm almost I'm almost upset that chicory is gone, as I was when, when uh, Keith Emerson died. I feel like the, every, ever since 2000, the whole freaking cent decade, the, the last two decades can just suck a bag, you know? Yeah. So many great people have died. And, and that's life. Time moves in a linear fashion. It feels like it's only happened in four or five. <laughs> it's like... The last 20. Oh, say, would you say since 2016? Since, I would say since 2000, there have been three really bad years for music. Yeah. And they all happened within six months of each other. Oh, God. Remember when David Bowie died? Oh. You're just like, there goes creativity. Started, started there there goes the last original musician. Sure. Yeah. You know, I wasn't even really taken far back by it. But wait, what really what hit me before then was Keith Emerson and Greg Blake. Right. And it, that that is Bob Dylan still alive? What? Bob Dylan's still alive? Bob's gone. Okay, I couldn't yeah. remember. Oh, okay. It's been a while. It's got to be. He can't you, possibly since be alive. You could hold your head up high. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Um. Speaking of holding your head up high, how about that Super Bowl, Sean? Go Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Says the Kansas City oh, former, former go, resident. <laughs> go Bucks. I am so happy to. I spent my Super Bowl. The best Super Bowl I've ever had. I can say that brazenly. Oh, brazenly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I spent it watching Warren Sapp, Tom Sigur, and Burt Kreischer. Well, Burt Kreischer, kind of. Tom <laughs> Sigur, a moderate. Warren Sapp accurately breaking down Kansas City and why they will not win from play one. 
from play one. Warren Sapp's standing there. And he goes, all right, ball juice, nothing. You got nothing. You got no O-line. You got no nothing. You can't do nothing. You can't get past this. And it just, it was like, as soon as he said you got no O-line, that hit me and I went, they don't. They so don't have an offensive line. line. No, it's right there. Just check. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, they don't. It, they they it have was... no offensive line. And that hit me in such a such a way that I I had I had just made a uh, a four hour drive back after a trip to move my brother's <laughs> garage around and throw out forty percent of it. That was what I was doing in Cali. That sounds fun. So I tore apart his garage, which used to be my grandmother's garage, and we haven't gone through it since she gone through it since she, gone through it since she died. And uh, do you mind? And Whoops! <laughs> if you're sensitive to earphones, yeah. sorry for the crunches and the crinkles. I might cut that out. And um, <laughs> nobody asked. <you. laughs> My phone does that just, too. Sometimes. Just like just like a woman chiming in. Whoa. You don't need her to shut your poor mouth. Wow. Oh, I knocked your phone over. I was so belligerent. <laughs> your phone. My phone is just like what? Uh, by the way, ladies, he's single. <laughs> We'll see. I know that Sean doesn't really mean that, which is why I, I tolerate that. Everything I say is 100% that, the truth. <laughs> that can be tolerated in jest mm -hmm. should be looked at first through a lens of comedy. And then, comedy. if you need to probe deeper, mm -hmm. I will show you how deep you need to probe. Well, you know the secret to great comedy. So, But look, at the end of the day, Tampa Bay. Timing! Tampa Bay tore Kansas City apart. Tampa Bay shut down any any thought that Mahomes would get past them. Mahomes showed up to work. Nobody showed up to help him. The man right. threw to no one. He had there was no one. They were always covered. It, not not it only was that, so good. Can't, it was can't, so good. Kansas City decided, hey, let's play like the Niners do. And they fucking penalty, penalty, penalty. It was just like, guys, you know you're in the Super Bowl, right? And look, I heard, I heard even that. Oh, you know, it's the exuberant amount of penalties, the the, the sheer the sheer amount of penalties, and it's like, oh, that's enough reason to go. Tom Brady's getting the bag. And I'm like, look. There's holding. <laughs> There's yeah. face mask grabbing. You're fucking up because you're desperate and you're scared. It's okay to say that. And mm. I feel like the middle of the country is the last demographic to say that. Ooh. We're scared. Wow. Ooh. Oh, I just offended a lot of people. Woo! Uh, so I feel like the middle of the country. Before you unsubscribe, I feel like the middle of the country <laughs> yes. is la are the last people to admit that they are scared mm. of change, and I and I understand that. But look, you cannot have blind loyalty to a team or anybody or anything. You really. can't have blind loyalty to a team, just like you can't have blind loyalty to a player on a team. Once the player goes, the team changes, but you have to mm -hmm. be there to support the team through the changes. That makes you not a fair weather fan, but a fair fan. Right. And I feel like Kansas City, St. Louis need to go through some of that. They need to experience it. It does that. seem almost like there's hey, a weird, gross fan in right. there that it's like they've been having some guys, good years. Let go of the shit and yep. just rebrand, remarket, change things up. They've been going through some, they had some good years going and then they recently. Had bad years. And, and suddenly it's recently. like, and, and for me, it's, it's very reminiscent of the Niners and what they've been going through. And they're still shooting themselves in the foot, unfortunately. But 
Next year's our year, man. <laughs> All right. I want to get away from football. It, it's I, before I throw something. Eh? Throw something? Eh? Anyway. You know, I would throw it uh, with a short, tight spiral pattern. That way, yes. Kansas City uh, won't intercept it. Noise. Oh, what a terrible thing to say about a terrible team. <laughs> Uncle Nearest, 1856. This is the 50%. And now, here's a 30-second whiskey review. Oh, let's jump in. Let's do it. Let's do a 30-second whiskey review. Okay. Ready? That'd be, so, that'd be so good for your review. Try and be like, hey, 30 seconds, we're going to see oh, it. I, in. I, I, do, I do one-minute whiskey reviews for TikTok. Oh, okay. All right. So, so one, I'm getting response. So, two, three. Three. And... Uncle Nearest, 1856 Premium Whiskey. We will see award-winning American whiskey, handmade in Tennessee, maple charcoal filtered, aged in charred oak barrels. Let's give it a 1 to 10 on nose. Just just numbers, nothing too analytical. 1 to 10? I give it a 6. 4. Mm. 4 on nose. Oh, on nose. I'm sorry, I was going all mm-hmm. overall. On nose, I give it eh, about a five. <coughs> of course, I have it on the rocks now, and there's 30 seconds. Maybe a minute. We'll do a minute review. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, Ooh, eight what? and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. What a jump. Beautiful buttery notes filling out and saturating that mid-body palette. I wish you guys could see oh, the hand movements. Wonderful. She had wonderful huge tracks oil, of land. Oil slickness <laughs> just, just, just enveloping all those, all those wonderful floral and caramel and brown sugary notes. They're great for making bread puddings and, and uh, baked goods. Right on. Much better, much better on the pound than it is on the nose. So really, it's like a two to three minute review. But either way, um, if you do want to see the full video of us reviewing Uncle Ernest 1856, check, click the link in the uh, show notes and uh, check it out on the uh, the channel. But um, I feel no, what? we're going to keep talking. Oh, we're going to keep talking. Yeah, we, got, we got another. I wasn't. I wasn't. Cu- I wasn't cutting out early. It sounded like you were. No, no, no. I was trying to transition to the next topic of the day. What's your best thing of the week, Sean? Oh, I hate that question. That I literally hate that question. My best thing of the week. I'll tell you what. My best thing of the week was I got to look at my calendar, start to cross off days, and realize that I'm going to Kansas City <laughs> in less than two weeks. How ironic. Less than two weeks. And you get to go and just point at every every Kansas City fan and laugh or what? I'll tell you what. You need to buy yourself a, a jersey of uh No I don't of the other team. No I don't. I'm just kidding. No I don't. Because at the heart and soul of it, mm-hmm. Kansas City is a city about defying the odds and about being the underdog. Okay. So as the person who is the only person wearing the one lone soul jersey that is the opposite to the red and yellow in the sea that is the stadium, mm-hmm. I know I'll be seen and appreciated and not harmed. Ah, uh, it's not a Raiders game. <sighs> Fuck, I'm so glad that I'm not going to any fucking Raiders games. And we say that because Fuck the Raiders at, fans. As people who live in Vegas... <laughs> Man, shit! I used to live in the Bay Area. I used to live in the Bay Area, and you, you, yeah, it, it, everything you've heard about a Raiders game, yeah. If you're a Raiders fan listening, um, you guys, if you're an Oakland Raiders fan listening, you, you guys, you made it worse. But, I had, I've had nothing but the worst experiences with you, but I want nothing but the best experiences with you. And you make it so difficult. Okay, so that was your best so That was your best thing of the week. My best thing of the week was before I got out of the, 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 the van, yes, I'm a dad, before I got out of the van, before going into work this morning, our, 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 Can I be a little more appreciative with my day of the week thing? Can I finish? Go ahead. Because I'm, I'm going to forget because I'm old. All right. So long story short, I made a TikTok 
All right, I did a, I did a stitch with, if you don't know, it's basically me cutting into someone's TikTok and, and re responding, reacting to it. And someone said, start a fight without involving politics, start a fight in five words or less. And I stitched in and I looked at the camera angrily. I zoomed in and I said, pineapple belongs on pizza. And that was it. And I thought, ha ha ha, no, no big whoop. I did not anticipate the shitstorm I brewed up in the comments section. And that thing has gotten over 2,200 views in like three days. And people are loving it. People are agreeing. People are threat are telling me to die. <laughs> so it's only four letters, four words. But uh, I'll fix it in five. I'm sure you will. You couldn't be more wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other people have, have come. <laughs> and then that's where the 50% of the people that hate you come to Well, hey, you like, know what? You're welcome. There's here. the branch. Go <laughs> find that TikTok and feel free to stitch it because I turned Stitch on. Uh, I'm not a coward who, who turns off everything. what that means. Yeah, exactly. And I'm so old. Shut up. You're 18 years old, younger than me. I'm so old. I'm 18 years older than I thought I would make it. True, fair enough. So you wanted to be appreciative of your best thing. More appreciative. But I, I honestly am really appreciative of... The immediacy of the feedback on TikTok and the, the general love I get from my followers. If, and I really am appreciative of the TikTok followers who have come over to my YouTube channel and subscribed. Go. Play. Oh, I didn't say those. Well, no, you're, you're, no. you're being oh. more appreciative. Yeah. I was just going to say I'm appreciative <laughs> that I'm also being more mindful and in the moment mm -hmm. of where I'm at. Because that, that was a... Being aware of where I was was mm -hmm. a thing I blocked out for a really long time. Like an, a, a, a ridiculous amount of time. Like and, a painful uh, amount of time. And you should never have to block out where you are to appreciate when you are. I think I met you at, at the end of that session, at that period of time. Towards the end of that session. No. No? No. It was worse than when, when I first met you. I started to feel it at 18. Fair enough. And it came from uh, dad stuff. Would you would you say there was depression? Oh yeah. Like on a clinical level? Yeah. Oh, more than more than clinical level. Yeah, depression, anxiety. Um, um, I mean, well, fuck, almost to a point. Did maybe, maybe if I was getting that manic. Definitely mania manic kind right. of episodes, but um, was were you drumming at that point already? Yeah, okay. drumming had nothing to do with it. It was the well because drumming the, does attract a lot of people who have are going through that situation. No, no. The thing about drumming was the, drumming was my release. The thing, <clears throat> like drumming, was all of the peace that I got throughout the day. I got to sit down and I got to do something linear and do something all the way through, and it that was a whole different thing than the chaos that was going on around me. Everyone associates drums with chaos, but it's, it's controlled. It's all controlled. Yeah. It's, I, it's I, the same cyclical patterns that are in playing an acoustic guitar or playing a, a chord progression. It's the same thing. It's just on a bigger level because it's, it's more emphatic. Right. And I'm starting to learn more and more that, the more chaotic a song sounds, especially with the drummers doing, the more controlled it is. Keith the, Moon, the Who, yeah, Keith Moon, the Who is the perfect example. You, you isolate the drums, you're like, oh no, but, but he's fucking brilliant. Yeah, he knows exactly what he's you doing. Take, you take all the heavy hitting out of most of recordings, like most of the what you perceive as heavy hitting, mm -hmm. and you go, that's not heavy hitting. That's just energy, right? And you listen to something like. Uh, uh, a Stuart Copeland and a Keith Moon, and you go, oh, it's the same kind of. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Anticipation. It's just one is turning up the volume a little bit. One's one's turning not up volume, the, the intensity. One's turning up the the, the the anticipation, the eagerness. Yeah, but to, also to play on the downbeat. The style of music itself drives and lends itself to a certain style of drum playing, right? Right, right, uh, right. And then you have guys nowadays that are like Nate Smith, who are the entire antithesis of that. Was he, who, who's he play for? Wolfpack. Right. Yeah. I, and I recognize the name, I just oh, couldn't remember from where. Oh, yeah. I just recently discovered Wolfpack, and I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's, they're, I like Wolfpack, they're, but I also like, I'm he, in this. They're unorthodox. When you look at them, you're like, that should, you shouldn't sound like you sound. <laughs> 
Based I felt the same way about um, uh, Weezer. Not Robin kidding. Thick. Hold on. Oh, oh shit! Oh. Now I have to. Now I have to get that taste out of my. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. But Mayor Hawthorne. Mayor yeah. Hawthorne. Oh, I'm not familiar. Mayor. Oh, Mayor Hawthorne's great. Uh, hey, just make a note. No, no, no. It's fine. Mayor Hawthorne is a. Uh, he was the first guy. That's going to interrupt the recording. No, stop. How is it not? The second you start playing music on it. Would you trust me? Okay. Okay. So, Mayor Hawthorne is this this chameleon. Okay. Ethereal quality of a man, of a songwriter, kind of like a Jay Z. Okay. When when you when you hear the songwriting quality, you're like, oh, you're more than just that. You're more than the style. You're 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 encapsulating of just so much more. Okay. But oh wait, you think we can get away with playing his music? It's Patreon. It, yeah, I don't. It's still copyright. It's copyright. Yeah, you're fine. You have up to ten seconds. Okay. Ten consecutive seconds. Don't sue us, please, Mayor. <laughs> Oh, the microphone's plugged in. It's just gonna look that loud, is it? Oh, oh stupid, stupid, stupid! Uh, he was trying to play stupid through. Shot. You were trying to cast it God to the computer that isn't. Okay. God damn it! Now I fucked it all up. Beep. Please stand by for technical difficulties. Did I ever tell you I was on Wheel of Fortune? No, you've only told me about your wheels of fortune, but I think you should save that for another episode. You, you, you've told me in great detail about your wheels of fortune. So maybe is this a show or is this a is this a social media platform? What is this wheel of fortune? Oh, don't don't patronize me. I am. <laughs> Don't you I would never, softball me. I would never Patrick The temerity, Swayze. sir. How dare you? For Patrick Swayze, you. Patrick Swayze? Yeah. Okay, let's make a pot. Anyway, Wheel of Fortune, the game show. When I was in high school, so what happened was, when I was in high school, I was a junior. Junior? Senior. I was a senior. And it turns out that one of my very few friends in high school, because I was a very... Oh, what a lonely boy. I, I was not a very gregarious, outgoing kind of high school kid. That came much later. But uh, one of my few friends was talking to me about how he, he asked me, he's like, hey, man, would you ever be interested in going on Wheel of Fortune? I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, they have a, something called Teen Week. And they film a bunch of episodes with teens. And you go down and you film like a whole week of shows in one day and you, you bring like three changes of clothes just in case you win and you got to go back to you know then you come back for the friday one and if you win that then you come back for like one they film that's i guess all the teen week champions or something and <clears throat> i was like what and he told me about it so i told my parents and we drove down to la and the, you take a test in a room. There's a two-way mirror. You can see the mirror. And you're like, okay, I can I can see the outline of a video camera, you know, on a tripod. Because uh, someone doesn't understand lighting. <laughs> and I passed the test. Got told I was going to be on the show. It was very exciting. And me being on Wheel of Fortune paid for the first couple of years of college. I ended up winning... Seventy-seven thousand, no, seventy-one thousand dollars in cash and prizes. It sounds like a lot before taxes, but the prizes made up way more than the cash did because I managed to land on. Get this, that five CD disc player won that on Wheel of Fortune. I have a in a very nice box of stainless steel silverware, like all full for like eight settings. You're still our wedding set. That was supposed to be. Something else that they ran out of. They said, "Well, we can give you this." It's supposed to be Dale Earnhardt. Uh, I got. I won a keyboard. I won some board games, but I ended up selling or giving away a fair bit of those prizes because I was just, you know, over the years, just like I don't need. I don't use this thing. Whatever. My mom was so pissed. My mom. My mom's old school. She's like, "You save everything," you know. Um, 
You have five players. Can I give you a board game for you guys to play? We have so many games, but sure, what game? You you guys seem to have a lot of games. But what game? <sighs> but wait, there's more. I mean, there's always more. <clears throat> I won my particular day of Wheel of Fortune. I didn't win. I came back on the fr- for the Friday episode. I came in second. Um, but guess what my bonus word was on the that I that I managed to solve and win my day. What? Musician. <laughs> I'm so surprised. Are you I, so surprised? I, I honestly, oh, not another Monopoly game. Or we don't have Lord of the Rings. We have Harry Potter and Super Mario Brother and all sorts of. Monopoly. Have you ever played it by the actual rules? Yes, and amazingly, we're still a family. <laughs> it's so short when it's the actual rules. The super, like the, actually, no, the Super like Mario the, Brothers uh, version is ridiculously easy and short. Oh, yeah, but I'll no, I'll take I'll I'll play the Lord of the Rings Monopoly game. So not tonight. <laughs> no, no, oh, it's the trilogy edition, yeah. including six collectibles, the Lord of the Rings token, gold toned ring, and you get the ring. Just kidding. A special game rule. What's special game rule? As in, there's some rule like the nuclear pawn yeah. or what? He wants to open it so bad. He's all so proud. I'm just, just you know. If you oh, I like the money. <coughs> oh, nice, nice. Instead of the hotels, you get tier of uh, what is it called? Towers. Towers of Sauron. Right. Yeah, something like that. Fortresses. There's a name for this particular one in the movie. I can't remember off the top of my head. So you have a fortress. Okay. And you have strongholds. There's the ring. Have you tried like have you tried like, you know, heating it up with fire to see okay. if it's it time limit game. Okay. Before starting, agree upon a definite hour of termination when the most powerful player will be declared declaimed the winner. Before starting, the banker shuffles and cuts the title deed cards and deals two to each player. Oh <laughs> shit. Two? Wow. Fuck. Oh, shit. Okay. Two to each play. Holy oh, shit, I want to play that version. That's fast. Here you go. Here comes property. Players immediately pay the bank the value of territories down to them. Christ. Okay. All right. That's a <laughs> shitty fast game. Optional rule. Place the one ring in bag end, the first Middle Earth territory bag space. End. Every time a player rolls the eye of Sauron, immediately move Sauron. Sauron immediately <laughs> move the one ring to the next middle of the territory. These are the spaces that you can build strongholds and fortresses on. See strongholds on page seven. For example, the one <laughs> ring starts in back end. It will skip the next space. Is that is uh, an event card? Christopher Walken, Space ladies and gentlemen. And move on to Farmer's Maggots, you know, with the, the middle of the toy. Oh. And the one ring, then we'll skip to scene by Palantir, non-territory space. The, 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 the Bill of Pony, non-territory space, and go on to Buckaberry Ferry, the next middle of the territory space. After you move the one ring, move your token, not your Gerard token. Get it? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Christ. Ha! Ha! Cat. <laughs> I can't fucking do it. I can't. Oh my god. I'm out. I Thanks for walking, I ladies tap. and gentlemen. I tap. I'm out. <laughs> All right. Oh, shit. With right. that, I think it's time for us to no, we drink got five, a little more. We got, we got five minutes. We're going to. Oh, shit. What? I, can't. I really. What? Oh, no. I can't get out. I can't get out of the voice. <laughs> I can't. I fucking can't. <laughs> okay. So, you know that game where, like, uh, take any movie title and replace every, <gasps> or take replace every character but one with Muppets. Who's the human? Who do you keep? And I said, and I like to think. Okay, let's try. Who? To- no, you keep you get rid of everybody, except, and you keep Christopher Walken as one character, and everybody else is a is a Muppet. Picture uh, that. Okay. Christopher Walken is like you know space, the final frontier. <laughs> space, the final frontier. These are the These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. To boldly go. Oh yes. Yeah. Who's four year long four year long mission to boldly go when no man has gone before. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't. You can't keep it up. No, I. Just, I, I what yeah, because fun? the thing is, I I have to go to bed at some point, and I just I feel like if oh. I speak Chris Walken all night, I can't <clears throat> get out of it. What if he doesn't really talk like that in his private life? What if in his private life? Have you never heard the Kevin Kevin no. Pollock thing? I believe, but, no, but I believe it. Kevin Pollock. So Kevin Pollock's talking about him at a meet and greet Hollywood party. And Kevin Pollock's got this little car thing that like comes up when you beep at it and it comes up and shoots up next to him. And he goes, Chris Walken. Chris Walken jumps out and goes, Wow! Your car's a <laughs> Chase me. Did you say chase me? Chase me. <laughs> chase me. Oh. You gotta buy into it. You gotta be, you gotta chase me. Oh, well, he's ready to go. He's so spry. I wish so, you people could see the, the, the pantomime he was. This is uh, awesome. You know, uh, for you Patreon, for you Patreon submissioners, uh, submitters, contributors, Sub- contributors, uh, uh, contortionists, whatever you want to <laughs> say, uh, whatever, whatever word, whatever uh, nomenclature you want to go by, we appreciate you. And we do. For you top tier ones, I. The submissionaries. Submission for you, sub, for you, sub, for you subs. I believe they're platinum tier. For you subs out there. Yes. Because I know. Oh, God. I know what's going to do. Bad baby, bad baby. I know. I know. I just went to fly like bad baby, bad baby, bad baby. Bad baby. Away, my boys. <laughs> goes away. Oh, uh, we were gonna say you had a message for the top tier patrons. Thanks for the money, sucker. I will drink the things I'm uncomfortable with drinking around the people I'm uncomfortable drinking them around if we can agree that no conversational topic is going to make us uncomfortable. Cheers. Cheers. May that be the tribute to the show. Right? The toast to the whole thing. Why not? Just, I want to talk about things that make everybody uncomfortable. And you know what? No one's allowed to be uncomfortable. We're all uncomfortable. Get fucking used to it. This is what's bonding us. This is what's bridging the gap. This is what's bringing us full circle into the close and the end of the episode. There you go. Uh, And if you have any subjects that you would like us to tackle or any questions you want us to answer, believe it or not, we will give them due diligence and answer them like grown-ups sometimes. That was a good noise. Um, please send your emails to, to. I'm sorry, we're 59 minutes in. Yeah. I am going in for another round. There you and go. I will say but I'm trying to say goodbye to the I next know, people. I know you're trying to say goodbye right. to the next Anyway, people. if You'll you say goodbye to the you next want us to talk about something, two brains we'll one. Talk about it. Two brains one bottle at gmail.com. Link is in the description. But you got to submit it. You got to talk to us about it, and you got to at least give us your 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 opinion. Yeah, right. You know, start lead. Leave with the uncomfortable. Make your statement. Let us be able to review it and talk about it in a, in a fair and unjudged manner. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. Please be amazing. Don't Please. make it worse. And be amazing to other people, not just yourself. Right. We'll see you next time. Hopefully. On Two Brains, One Bottle. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba.